Hi, good afternoon everyone. I am Ralph Arvin Alcantara, the head nurse of the Kalamba Medical Center Intensive Care Unit and a certified stroke nurse, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon. I am thrilled to welcome you all to the official launch of the acute stroke unit of Kalamba Medical Center. As we all know, stroke has been one of the leading causes of illness and death in the Philippines, even before this global pandemic. And as we gear towards the new normal in healthcare, we are honored to introduce the Acute Stroke Unit, which aims to provide prompt and the best stroke care possible to all our patients. In light of CMC's mission to provide efficient and quality care that meets local and international standards, we will continue to strive for excellence and ensure that we will continue to serve our clients to their utmost uh, satisfaction. Stroke is a manageable illness, but time is essential and critical and can greatly affect outcomes. In coordination with the initiative from Boehringer Ingelheim, our passionate neurologist, the nursing service department, and with the support of the whole CMC community and administration, we have established a clinical pathway for stroke management that will ensure patient safety and quality of care as, as what our mission aims to be. To formally open this event, let us all welcome Dr. Marie Catherine Remolino, the Chief Medical Officer of Columba Medical Center for, 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 a, for a short opening remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the launching of our acute stroke unit 
here at the Kalamba Medical Center. We'd like to thank you for joining us on this very special day. This has been a project in our hearts for a very long time and we thank everybody who has helped us reach this very day. We hope that we would be able to serve our patients here in Kalamba and south of Manila so that they would be able to stand the chance of the best stroke management here. And it is our hope as well that you would join us in spreading the word that you can have the best stroke management here in Kalamba Medical Center and that we will take great care of your brains here in Kalamba Medical Center. Again, maraming salamat po and sana po ang ating mga isip, ang ating utak ay lalong maalagaan dito sa Kalamba Medical Center. God bless you all. Thank you po, Dr. Kat, for that uh, message. Up next, to deliver a short message to our viewers, let us hear from our beloved and respected president, Dr. Jose Ojuliano. Good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to know that uh, we are opening our acute stroke unit at CMC. I now remember about 10 years ago when my wife had a stroke when we were living in Pansol. And we had a hard time getting the ambulance. And then the ambulance brought my wife to CMC in the old building. So Dr. Lantikan was there, but when they diagnosed my wife, they said she has to have an injection to, to dissolve the clot. And unfortunately, CMC does not have this medicine. So we had to move on to Makati Med. And finally, they have the medicine and they have the doctor. So she was finally given the medicine to dissolve the clot. Now with this acute stroke unit of CMC, we can do all of this here in Kalamba. We don't have to go very far. And you know, when you have a stroke, the treatment must be done as soon as possible because every hour that it is delayed will affect the quality of care. So, friends, let us celebrate this occasion when finally Kalamba will have an acute stroke clinic in CMC for the service of everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for that very inspirational message. I hope this imparts something in you that will inspire you to perform at our best all the time and to continue to uplift the CMT brand of care. Now, to give us a brief history on how the acute stroke unit was initiated, created, and now rolling out, help me in welcoming Dr. Maria Teodora Juliano, our Chief Administrative Officer. Today, Kalamba Medical Center is embarking on a new project called Acute Stroke Unit. It is a part of my personal journey. Since 14 years ago, our family experienced my mom being a stroke patient herself. During that time, there were no uh, facilities available within the area, meaning we didn't have an MRI at the time. Um, we didn't have the needed medications. Although we had trained personnel, they were not really trained that much to address uh, stroke patients. As we should all know, time is of the utmost importance in the management of stroke cases. 
we don't anymore need to bring our loved ones to Manila for management. Right here within our MIDS is Calamba Medical Center that is able to provide these services. Thus, we are able to prevent the long-term uh, sequelae of strokes and also provide better quality of life and care for our patients and their family as well. Thank you, Doctora, for that insight on how this project of ours developed over the years and hopefully continues to improve over the coming years. Truly, it is such an honor to take part in this momentous event as we expand our reach and services to the whole of the Southern Tagalog region and our nearby provinces. Let us now proceed to one of the highlights of this afternoon's activity, the live session entitled Basics of Stroke and Its Management. We are honored to have one of our neurolog neurologists to share his expertise in stroke assessment and management. He holds a degree in BS Biology from the University of Santo Tomas and is a graduate of Doctor of Medicine from the University of the East. He had his residency training in adult neurology from the International Institute of Neurosciences of St. Luke's Medical Center and had his internship program in Korea Memorial Medical Center. He is a fellow of the Philippine Neurological Association, a member of the Philippine Medical Association, Philippine League Against Epilepsy, and a member of the Stroke Society of the Philippines. He is an active consultant here in Calamba Medical Center and other hospitals around Laguna. He will be the head neurologist of the Calamba Medical Center's Acute Stroke Unit. Help me in welcoming Dr. Mark Christer Palanginan. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Good day to everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to the grand launch of our acute stroke unit. And now uh, I'll just share my slides. Let's proceed with the presentation. Can you see it? Okay. Now, uh, let's start. So, again, uh, I'm going to present our acute stroke unit. So, first of all, uh, our outline for this afternoon session. We have to define what a stroke is. We have to know the epidemiology, the anatomy of the brain, of course. We have to know the causes the signs and symptoms of stroke. We'll brush up on treatment and we, we will talk about the acute stroke unit itself. Now, what is a stroke? It's a sudden interruption in blood flow to the brain that results in a neurologic deficit. So as you can see, highlighted here is the word sudden has to be sudden, biglaan, without any warnings. It is also called a brain attack, as opposed to heart attack, which of course is for the heart. A stroke is a brain attack. It is an emergency. It is also fatal, but it is treatable and preventable. Now, as neurologists, always say, time is brain, time is brain. Why? Because every second counts. So as you can see here, for every stroke, 1.2 billion neurons are lost. That's a lot. And you have accelerated your age 36 years. So every second counts because every second, there are 32,000 neurons lost. So we have to hurry if this is a stroke. A stroke is an emergency. Now, let's talk about the epidemiology. 
Stroke is the second leading cause of death worldwide. In the Philippines, the mortality is 82.8 per 100,000 person years. And in 2014, there is one neurologist for every around 320,000 Filipinos. The urban centers, there's uh, the majority of neurologists, about 67% for the rural areas, 33%. Now, uh, this is uh, according to the Philippine Health Statistics in 2018. For Calabar Zone, we have a population of more than 15 million. For Laguna, we have more than a million. And in here, stroke is the second cause of mortality in males and the fourth cause of mortality in females. So this illness is very important. Since we're talking about stroke, of course, we have to talk about the brain anatomy. So here's the brain, but uh, so many words in here, so many labels, but I'd just like to point out that these are the arteries of the brain. So as we know, there's a sudden interruption of the blood flow in the brain, that's the stroke. So anywhere here in these arteries, there's a blockage, or there's an interruption to the blood flow, then there is a stroke. Now, the main arteries are here in the, uh, of the brain are here, uh, namely the anterior cerebral artery. Here, which is in bold font, the middle cerebral artery, the posterior cerebral artery. And uh, here is the distribution of the various blood vessels. So for the blue, we have the anterior cerebral artery, the yellow, the middle cerebral artery, the pinkish, Peach, posterior cerebral artery, and the deep branches. This is the coronal plane of the brain. For the axial view, again, the blue, anterior cerebral artery, the yellow is the middle cerebral artery, posterior cerebral artery for the pink. Now, it depends on which artery is affected and uh, the symptom presentation. So you have to check the symptoms first and then we'll correlate it with the imaging and the other tests. Now let's go to the causes. So we have uh, different risk factors. Now we have non-modifiable risk factors those that the patient cannot change, those are treatable risk factors, usually illnesses, and lifestyle risk factors, those that involve lifestyle choices. For the non-modifiable, we have the age. Of course, uh, stroke risk doubles per decade after 55 years old. And males do have stroke more often than females. If you have a previous stroke or transient ischemic attack, this is also a risk factor for race. Blacks are more prone to having strokes than Caucasians, and of course, genetics. For treatable risk factors, we have illnesses, common illnesses, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, heart problems. So these are treatable causes. And of course, lifestyle. Smoking and alcohol abuse. These are two very common risk factors. Some patients, obesity, physical inactivity, especially during this pandemic, and in some, illicit drug use. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of a stroke? It has to be a sudden, either one-sided weakness or numbness, 
sudden trouble in speaking or understanding, sudden loss of vision or doubling of vision, severe headache, or dizziness. Now, we have two stroke types. So we have infarction and hemorrhage. For the infarction, it counts for around 70 to 80% stroke cases. It's the most common type of stroke. And it can either be thrombotic or embolic. Thrombotic strokes occur when there is accumulation of uh, fatty deposits or other substances inside the brain, then slowly accumulates. For embolic, usually came from another source, usually from the heart, and then goes through the arteries and then lodges into the brain. So as we can see here, we have a different size stroke. Uh, usually the embolic strokes have larger infarctions than the thrombotic ones. So as I've said, causes of infarction are usually fatty deposits, heart conditions, and blood disorders. Now for the hemorrhagic type, counts for 20 to 30 percent of the intracerebral hemorrhage wherein there is a rupture of the arteries. So as you can see here in the CT scan, it's dirty white and sometimes there is subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, usually see during trauma and uh, forms of Cranial aneurysms. For hemorrhages, the more common reasons are high blood pressure, blood disorders, and vascular malformations or aneurysms. Now, let's talk about stroke myths and facts. So, some say stroke cannot be prevented, but in fact, up to 80% of strokes are preventable. There's no treatment for stroke. No, there's a treatment for stroke. It may be available in your area and we have it here in Kalamba Medical Center. Stroke only affects the elderly. But in fact, stroke can happen to anyone at any time. The youngest patient I've seen is six years old. Stroke happens in the heart. As I've said, a stroke is a brain attack. So it's different from a heart attack. Stroke recovery only happens for the first few months after the stroke. Well, stroke is a lifelong process. It is a chronic condition. Pangmatagalan, ika nga. We say strokes are rare. But in fact, stroke is the second leading cause of death worldwide the primary cause of disability worldwide. Strokes are not hereditary, but if you have a family history of stroke, it increases your risk of having a stroke also. They say if stroke symptoms go away, you don't have to see a doctor. Well, this is wrong because there are temporary stroke symptoms called transient ischemic attacks. These are mild strokes and these are warning signs prior to the actual stroke and need to be taken seriously. So if you have symptoms of stroke immediately, go to the hospital. Now let's proceed to the treatment. So when a stroke patient comes in the ER, he or she will be seen by the triage team. And then if this is an acute stroke, the brain attack team will be called. So what is a brain attack team? This is a hospital-based stroke team available around the clock, seven days a week, in order to evaluate within 15 minutes any patient who may have suffered a stroke. Now, who is the stroke team? All of these. 
this is a team. So it's not just the doctor and the nurse. You have the dietitian, you have the pharmacist, the therapists, physiotherapist, neuropsychologist. So everyone here is included in our team. Now, after being assessed by the stroke team, the patient will undergo a brain imaging, depending on the symptom, either a CT scan or an MRI. And then after doing that, we'll review the symptoms, we'll review the brain imaging, and the stroke team will decide if the patient is for thrombolytic therapy. This is the most important thing here. Because uh, for thrombolytic therapy, patients treated with the IV recombinant tissue plasminogen activator or the RTPA within three hours of stroke onset are at least 30% more likely to have minimal or no disability at three months. Sometimes we extend it even up to four and a half hours. So there's a, so there's a big uh, improvement in the symptoms if this medicine is given. So if you have symptoms or you know someone who has symptoms, ideally you have to bring them to the hospital within three to four and a half hours so we can give this medicine because this is a clot buster and this is a wonder drug. We have uh, partnered with Angels Initiative as uh, Ralph said and uh, this medicine, you will have uh, more, more or less no minimal or no disability after three months. So you have to immediately go to the hospital, to the emergency room. Now, for the acute stroke unit, this is a hospital unit that cares for stroke patients exclusively with a specially trained staff and a multidisciplinary approach to treatment and care. So why do you have a stroke unit? Well, a stroke unit improves the chances of survival. Also, it reduces the disability and it shortens the length of hospital stay and rehabilitation. So we have studies supporting these. So we have seen in the Cochrane database analysis with 23 trials, there's a significant reduction of death or dependency when patients are admitted in the acute stroke unit. So the acute stroke unit is different from the ICU. Uh, acute stroke unit only handles stroke cases, but the quality of care is like the ICU. Now, in patients who are admitted in the acute stroke unit, of course, uh, you have to admit them during their uh, unstable phase. They monitor the vital signs, the neurologic parameters, and then check for the diagnosis and treatment and secondary prevention. In our acute stroke unit, we have two dedicated beds. We have an emergency laboratory facility. We have the monitoring equipment, PPs, check for the oxygen saturation, respiration, temperature. And once a patient is stable enough, he or she can be transferred to a regular room and then rehabilitation can be started. So the patient needs physical therapy or occupational therapy, then we'll refer the patients to them. So the patient can improve faster. Of course, we have to check for quality improvement. Oh, so what's this? It's a systematic formal approach to the analysis of performance and efforts to improve it. So we don't just handle stroke cases, we check on our quality also. So register, we have a database and register them to track the type and number of strokes in the patients, their treatments, timelines. So, uh, we check for these because we want to be more efficient and we want to improve our patient safety and patient safety outcomes. So 
here in Calamba Medical Center, we have these facilities that can handle stroke cases. We have a fully equipped emergency room. We have hospitalists around the clock. We have stroke nurses, trained stroke nurses. Of course, we have the stroke unit. We have neurologists and neurosurgeons, physiatrists, therapists, with nutritional support. We have a 24-hour CT scan and MRI, laboratory also 24-hour available. Now, if you have stroke symptoms, you can contact the emergency room at this number. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pananginan, for that very informative yet brief overview of the stroke process and the different options of management. If there are any more questions, feel free to leave a comment in this live session, and we will try to address your concerns. Uh, Doc? Here are some of the questions that we have received so far, Paul. So number one, uh, what is the earliest sign of stroke that we can observe? Okay. So uh, for those at home, we can do the uh, FAST approach, F-A-S-T. So if you don't know uh, the, that if this is a stroke or not, you have to check for FAST, F for face. Check for any facial asymmetry. Okay. Check for the A, arms. Okay. Have to check for the arms and the legs. And then you also have to check for the balance of the patient. But these are usually, uh, these symptoms must be sudden and acute. Okay. If you're having doubts, if you think, or, or if you are unsure, it would be best to bring them to the emergency room because uh, as we know, timing is very important. But uh, that's the usual symptoms. You have to check for the asymmetry of the face, the arms, and the legs. If there's asymmetry in the strength, the sensation, then bring them to the emergency room immediately. Thank you, po, Doc, for that. Um, next question. Uh, you, you've discussed, Doc, the uh, different um, causes or uh, pwedeng mag-cause po ng stroke. So, ang question mm -hmm. natin, Doc, ng second, is what are ways to prevent stroke po? Okay. Well, uh, stroke prevention uh, in general is a very vague topic. <laughs> Of course, we have to know the illness of the patient. So if you have uh, other illnesses, hypertension, heart disease, blood disorders. Uh, well, usually, stroke patients are hypertensive. Uh, some of them are diabetic. So, of course, you have to check, your own, check on your diet. So, salt, low-fat diet. You also have to exercise. Avoid those uh, vices, smoking, avoid uh, uh, excessive alcoholic drinking, drug use, and always take your medicines religiously. Uh, some of my patients uh, have a stroke recurrence because they don't take the medicines after having a stroke. So they feel that they're okay na, magaling na. But in fact, the medicines prevent another stroke. So you have to take them religiously, regularly, and for life. Because if you stop the medicine, you might have another stroke. The question is when. It's not, will you have a stroke or not? It's when. So you have to take them to lower the risk of having a stroke. Yes, thank you, Doc. Um, here is another question from our viewer. Um, if there's a sign of stroke, 
is there first aid to help the patient while en route to CMC? Okay. Uh, this is also difficult because sometimes uh, I see some patients being given sublingual medicines, specifically uh, catapress or captopril uh, en route to the emergency room because after they check the blood pressure, the blood pressure is very high. But we have to remember that uh, different types of stroke have different treatments. So not all strokes have to be uh, the, the hypertension or the increased PP in the strokes, uh, not all of them have to be treated if the BP is high. So it would depend on the type of stroke. So if we are suspecting a stroke and then we're en route to the ER, then we'll just have uh, supportive measures for the patient. So just have the patient lie down on the car or in the uh, vehicle, you have to comfort them. Uh, we cannot do anything else, actually. So uh, it would be difficult also if you ask them to take their medications because sometimes uh, the throat is affected, there's difficulty in swallowing, and if they swallow the, the medicine, the pill, and the water, they will choke, and the medicine will go to the lungs. So aspiration pneumonia. So we do not advise that. Uh, we just have to bring the patient to the emergency room as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you, Paul, Doc. Um, here is another question. Mm -hmm. uh, you have discussed the treatment um, actylase. Yes. <clears throat> um, how does it affect stroke or how does it manage stroke? Well, the actylase, uh, it, it, it works on the basis of uh, lysis of the clot. So it lyses the clot, it dissolves the clot. So if we have an infarction in the arteries and then we give the medicine, the medicine will dissolve the clot. It's the most basic thing to in the the uh, with regards to the mechanism of action of the medicine. So it dissolves the clot. Of course, if after it dissolves the clot. Blood flow can then return, yes. and then hopefully, can uh, the brain can regain its normal function or usual function. That's why it is very important because, as we know, uh, time is brain. Uh, the the oxygen requirement of the brain is, is very important. We have to to be aware of that, and the brain cannot handle prolonged periods of uh, loss of oxygen. That's why we have to give it as soon as possible. But uh, it works in the dissolving of the blood clot. Okay. Thank you, Doc. And for our last question, um, how long does a stroke patient recover and how early can they start rehabilitation? Uh, it <clears throat> depends on the patient. Some um, mild cases uh, recover almost immediately meaning after a few days, after a few weeks, they're almost back to normal. But in some patients, especially severe cases, they, they don't fully recover. They improve, but they do not fully recover back to their usual selves. So it depends really on the stroke type, the stroke severity, where the stroke happened in the brain. But uh, as you know, stroke is a... Uh, lifelong illness. Uh, majority of the cases do recover, but uh, oh, sorry, do improve, but they do not uh, fully recover. So it, it depends. It depends yes. <clears throat> yeah. I hope our viewers have learned a lot and take part in spreading the word about it so that we can catch stroke early, as what Dr. Mark said. Um, Brain, uh, brain is time. Time, time is brain, sorry. Time um, is brain. Yes, no. To catch stroke early in our communities and treat them accordingly to improve patient outcomes. <clears throat> yeah. Again, po, thank you, Doc. If there are no more questions, let me present the Certificate of Appreciation awarded to Dr. Mark Christopher Palanginan. Let me read the citation. 
Uh, this is this certificate is proudly presented to the to Mark Christopher Palanginan for sharing his valuable knowledge and expertise in this session entitled Basics of Stroke and Its Management as part of the launching of the Columba Medical Center Acute Stroke Unit held today, July 28, 2021, via Facebook Live. Signed by Dr. Marie Catherine de Molino, our Chief Medical Officer, and Dr. Jose Ojoliano, our President and CEO. Thank you. Hmm? Ah, ADP na yun. To further introduce the acute stroke unit, here is a short video presentation showcasing the services of the acute stroke unit from discharge, from door to discharge. Let us all, let us all watch it. I hope you like that presentation and be reminded that we are capable in a stroke-ready hospital. Now, for the closing remarks, I give the floor to no other than our Chief Operations Officer, Dr. Sherard Adiviso. Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, I would like to thank the organized committee, especially Dr. Mike Palaginan, our, our speaker, and of course, Rabbi Alcantara, who is... Uh, the head of the stroke unit of Calaba Medical Center. I hope with this uh, webinar we will expand the information dissemination to Laguna and Lower Batangas. Uh, with this service, we will be offering it to the people who most needed it. So I hope with this 
we will not have uh, <coughs> any more consequences or morbidity of my stroke because we can get them early. As my marketing teacher once said, build a brand, all the benefit, be a blessing. With this good stroke unit, it will be a blessing to all people of Laguna and Batagas. Thank you and God bless the story. Thank you, for Dr. Shirai, for that message. Um, don't forget to check, out, check us out on our sev several social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Calamba Medical Center. Don't forget to like, share, follow, and subscribe. And watch out for our Viber community coming very soon. In behalf of the Calamba Medical Center, I extend our deepest gratitude to all of our viewers who joined us this afternoon. And hopefully, you could help us educating everyone about stroke and be reminded that illness should not be a life sentence, but rather a start of exploring new options for treatment, just like what we strive to achieve here in ASU and Alamba Medical Center. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day. This has been Ralph Arvin Alcantara, your moderator for today, na nagpapaalala na safe tayo sa CMC.